What's up, everybody? Welcome back to some more Fallout 4. My name is Raven from the Sky. Let's play. Pretty chaos. It was like the ain't that the super mutant dogs? They look like Roy that pit bulls. Mutated pit bulls. Ramen. Super mutants. One down, two down, I mean. I think that's it. Oh, I got a chest. Let's see what's in it. Two! Tactical pipe rifle. Pocketed boiled leather chest piece. Oh, I think we did okay. <laughs> I'm like, man, I ain't I ain't trying to face no dog on super beats, but shoot, we did alright. Oh, it's chained. We can't even we can't even loot it. Boo. Moo. <laughs> Anyway, um, I got a insulated jumpsuit. Let me see. The pocketed. It's even bit better. The boiled. Oh, it's a different color. I like that one that covers your whole, your whole chest. I think that's the heavy version. I think though. I think. It's usually a merchant that travels with these Brahmin, like traveling merchants. Although he probably got destroyed fighting the mutant, uh, the, the super mutants. Diamond City Security. Empire pads. Left guard armor. Oak baseball bat. Let me see. Let's see. I got the athletic outfit. Anyway. Let's go into Diamond City. I think this is where we, yeah, it is. This is where we meet Piper. I think that's her name. The chick. That's another companion, future companion. And then it's, ah, oh, it's, um, this is Synth. Like a detective or something. He's there too. Man, it's all coming back to me. Are we going to get anything? Man, we helped out with Super Mutant. Damn. Not afraid of mutants, huh? You're our kind of guy. What do you mean you can't open the gate? Stop playing around, Danny. I'm standing out in the open here for crying out loud. Uh, I got orders not to let you in, Miss Piper. I'm sorry. I'm just doing my job. Okay? 
We need more people Ooh, like you. Oh, just doing Thanks. your job. Protecting Let's Diamond City that. means You're keeping me out here. Is it? Oh, Not many around look, these days. Scary reporter. Here, I'm hey, sorry, take this. But I hope you can find really a use for it. Piper. I buy and See sell. Just put up everything you got and let's see if we can make a deal. Anything been happening around here? If you don't mind, prefer to just talk shop for now. Got a lot of quality goods here. Lock me out. Sure, let's take a look. Can't just lock me out. <laughs> Harness, melon. Stew pot, copper, oil. Soap. Do you have a minute? Sure, go ahead. When we first met, I admit, I had my doubts about you, but you've done nothing but impress me. You're just who the Minutemen needed to bring you us back from the brink. You said you're a traitor up from Quincy? You have enough supplies Thanks. to keep the general store stocked for a whole you. month? You probably realized by now <laughs> how important the Minutemen are to me. When I was a kid, the Minutemen were my heroes. They were the only good guys around, really. When I turned 17, I joined up with Ezra Hollis's company. He was one of the good ones. Really believed in the old time Minuteman way. We had a few good years there. I felt like I was part of something bigger than me. Like I was really helping make the Commonwealth a better place. It sounds like you were really making a difference. I think we were. I know we were, but obviously it didn't last. I'm sure there was a lot I didn't see or know enough to pay attention to. You know, the politics and rivalries and bad blood between the different groups. I guess General Becker was able to keep a lid on it, keep everyone more or less on the same team. But after he was killed, it all came out in the open. I couldn't believe it at first. These guys were supposed to be Minutemen. They were supposed to put their duty to the people ahead of everything else. You probably think I was pretty naive, huh? I guess I was. Still am, too. Even after everything, I still believe that the Minutemen can be what I always thought they were. The good guys. We are the good guys. We're doing our best. And a lot of it has to do with your example. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, thanks. Anyway, I appreciate you taking the time to listen. Anytime, Preston. Thanks, man. We'd probably better get back to it. You hear that, Danny? You gonna open the gate and let us in? Or are you gonna be the one talking to crazy Myrna about losing out on all the supply? Jeez, all right. Make it personal, Piper. Give me a minute. Better have until 50 for all day catches on the clock. Piper, who let you back inside? I told Sullivan to keep that gate shut. You devious, rabble-rousing slanderer. The level of dishonesty in that paper of yours. I'll have that printer scrapped for parts. Ooh, that a statement, Mr. McDonough? Tyrant mayor shuts down the press. Why don't we ask the newcomer? You support the news? Because the mayor's threatened to throw free speech in the dumpster. Always believed in freedom of the press. It's one of the foundations of a free society. Oh, I didn't mean to bring you into this argument, good sir. No, no, no. You look like Diamond City material. Welcome to the great green jewel of the Commonwealth. Safe, happy, a fine place to come. Spend your money, settle down. Don't let this muckraker here tell you otherwise, all right? I'm sure your city's a great place. <laughs> yeah, greatest house of cards in the Commonwealth. Until the wind blows. <laughs> now, 
Was there anything particular you came to our city for? I'm trying to find someone. Trying to find someone? Who? Uh... My son, Sean. He's less than a year old. Wait, your son's missing? Oh, you hear that, McDonough? What's Diamond City Security doing to help this man, huh? This isn't the first missing persons report to come through here, and now we have an infant who's been taken? Uh, don't listen to her. Well, I'm afraid that our security team can't follow every case that comes through. I'm confident that you can find help here. Diamond City has every conceivable service known to man. One of our great citizens can surely find the time to help you. Oh, I don't have. Oh, I should take some Mintat. Mintats. I don't think I even have any though. My charisma is dog crap. Well, sure. And a mayor of a great city must know everyone. Who can help me? Who can help me? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I don't. Oh, have come time on. Any more questions? Darn it! I'm a busy man. Enjoy well, your stay. Of course stay you in are. A fair city. In a fudging wasteland. This is ridiculous. Diamond City Security can't spare one officer to help. Right. I want the truth, McDonough. What's the real reason security never investigates? I've had enough of this, Piper. From now on, consider you and that little sister of yours on notice. Yeah, keep talking, McDonough. That's all you're good for. Right. Mmm, a big Diamond City welcome from the mayor. You feel honored yet? Look, I gotta go get settled in, but, um, stop by my office later. I have an idea for an article you'd be perfect for. Story of the century. With the Piper's office. Okay. Who's this? Danny Sullivan. You're Sullivan, right? So, you're that traitor Piper was talking about. Something tells me she's pulled the wool over my eyes again. Am I right? Piper's done this before? All the time. Thing is, sometimes she's bluffing, and sometimes there really is a group of 50 raiders just over the hill screaming for blood. So I usually just let her in. Not this time, though. Mayor's on the warpath. Hey, what's brought you into town anyway? Be good to note it down in the logs. I'm trying to find someone. Is that so? Who are you looking for? My boy Sean's been kidnapped. He's just a baby. Oh, look, I'm sorry, but we're under orders not to get involved in missing person cases. There's a lot of institute paranoia right now. We can't really risk fanning those flames with official action. What if people panic? How about we do a simple trade? Money for information. Hey, I don't oh, take bribes, okay? come on, dude. No. Uh, the Institute? The Institute? What's that? Ah, oh, damn. Look, I really shouldn't have said that. They're just a scapegoat, all right? Something people blame when things go wrong. If you really want to know, there's a whole newspaper inside the city that won't stop talking about them. Public occurrences. I just need a little information, Danny. We can keep this off the record. Okay. Oh, I can at least works. point you somewhere. Unofficially. When you get inside the city... Go to the back, around the market, to an alleyway. There's a couple of bright neon signs. Valentine's Detective Agency. No one likes going there, though, so buyer beware and all that. Yeah, that's where we meet. I forgot his name, though. Thanks for your help. Yeah, well, good luck. Stay out of trouble. That's another potential companion. Preston's gonna wind up going back to Sanctuary. The reason I keep him, though, with me, though, is that when you do those uh, side missions for the settlements, and if, like, talk to Preston, he's right there. You don't have to keep traveling back to Sanctuary just to complete the quest line. You know what I mean? That's so it's beneficial to keep him with you. At least when doing the, the Minutemen side missions, I mean. Mayor McDonough has always been against the Minutemen. You never quite understood why. Hey, kiddo. How are the paper sales? 
Well, the presses are getting overloaded. That motor is going to go soon if we don't replace it. Uh, you've been saying that for weeks and the old girl still keeps cranking. Stop worrying so much. I gotta head into the office. You start whistling if you see any angry politicians coming our way. Why? Is something wrong? Piper? <sighs> Man. Hi there. Free paper to newcomers. If the Institute grabs you in the night, at least we warned you. Thanks. I guess. I'm serious. The Institute takes people. You should read up if you're sticking around. I believe you. Thanks. You are a real lost lamb in the wolf's den, mister. <laughs> it's Institute Truth. Tell by Piper Wright. Handwritten. Noodles. We all eat them. We all love them. And Diamond City's Power Noodles has supplied this sustenance for the past 15 years from the stilted mechanical cadence of T Takahashi's program Japanese to the fragrant steam that wafts from each bowl to the was it scalding tang of each delicious mouthful. The ordering and eating of noodles is but one of many shared human experiences. Or is it? I was struck by this very question as I sat at the counter of Power Noodles last Wednesday night, just after 5 p.m. enjoying a dinner I had so many times before. That's when I noticed our every very own mayor, McDonnell, si what is it? What is it? Sidle up, sidle up to a stool and engage in the very same ritual, right hand extending, mouth opening, teeth chewing, yes, eating noodles. The shared experience of almost every Diamond City resident. Okay, everybody likes noodles. What, what's the point? So it must have also seemed to the residents of Diamond City that nearly 60 years ago on an uncharted, er, uncharacteristically warm May evening in, 20, not, in 2229, as they sat around this very same counter, but that was before the days of Takashi and his noodles, when the bar served not noodles, but ice-cold nuka colas, frothy beers, and stiff shots of whiskey. The barman's name was Henry, and that night he facilitated the shared human experience of drinking, smoking, take, talking, laughing, and that's it until tragedy struck. There aren't many among us who are even old enough to remember that evening, although some of the city's ghoul residents certainly could have, had they not been forcibly removed thanks to Mayor McDonough's anti-ghoul decree of 2282. But there is one person among us who does remember it, the distinctly Distinctly, the events of that evening respected matriarch Ustance Hawthorne, who recounted her story in a public occurrences exclusive interview. Oh, I was there all night, all right. Sitting right at the bar, sure as you're sitting in front of me now, 22 years old or so, and just looking to have a good time. I was safe behind the wall. We all were. So what was the harm? And let me tell you that Mr. Carter made it easy. He came into town earlier that day, said he was from out west. Somewhere it didn't really matter. What did matter was his smile and his laugh and the way he'd make everyone feel at ease. That night at the bar, we all just sort of crowded around him. Everyone wanted to exchange a word or hear about the state of the Commonwealth and Mr. Carter, he was all too happy to oblige. It was just so wonderful until it wasn't. Us stance continued her account of that evening and the moment when things turned sinister and the truth about Mr. Carter was revealed. We'd been drinking and carrying on. Must have been three hours. Mr. Carter had four or five drinks in that time. He seemed a bit drunk, I guess, like the rest of us. Then something just sort of happened. He was smiling, but the smile sort of went from his face all in an instant. And then his cheeks started twitching and kind of funny, kind of funny and... I remember watching him clear as if it happened just yesterday. He reached inside his coat, took out a revolver, and then blam! He shot Henry, the barman, right in the head. Didn't hesitate. Didn't show any emotion. Mr. Carter killed Henry as casually as if he were paying him for a drink. 
but his cheek never did stop twitching. Let me tell you, all heck broke loose after that. What Ustance is describing is, of course, is the infamous event known as the Broken Mask. When the people of the Commonwealth learned for the first time that the Institute, the shadowy scientific organization responsible for the creation of combat androids, had actually succeeded in creating a model so advanced it could effortlessly infiltrate human society. Unbeknownst to the people of Diamond City, the Institute has somehow involved the androids into the true synthetic human since after he shot Henry, that Mr. Carter shot three or four other people too. Like I said, all hell broke loose. The guards came running, they opened fire, and Mr. Carter kept shooting and throwing people around left and right. Finally, those guards put him down. It seemed like they had killed a man who had flipped his lid, gone crazy, and he lay there like a dead crazy man. Sure enough, God, it was horrible. But then we saw the plastic and the metal. This was one of them early sets, you see and we realized it wasn't a man at all. It was then we all knew the Institute wasn't just out there. The Institute was everywhere now, among us. It was never determined precisely why the synth known as Mr. Carter went on his killing spree. But some suggested he had somehow been remotely controlled by the Institute who wanted to test his combat effectiveness. Still others felt he had simply malfunctioned, a hypothesis supported by the twitching cheek and was never meant to kill anyone, but at that time, the why hardly seemed important. What mattered was that the humans of the Commonwealth had been truly infiltrated by an organization whose intentions and motives were and still are a comp complete mystery. Using a model of synth even less advanced than the ones the Institute has in service today. Which brings us to noodles. Specifically, the noodles consumed by Mayor McDonald last Wednesday night in the same spot that Mr. Carter the synth went haywire and mercilessly killed several people after spending hours sharing experiences that the people of Diamond City assumed we reserved for, was reserved for members of the human race. They were wrong, are we? Extra, extra. Is your neighbor really human? We have the exclusive. Glad you dropped by. You holding up, Blue? Yeah, holding up. Look, I'm just gonna say it. You're a vault dweller. A jumpsuit's a dead giveaway. So here's the deal. I want an interview. Your life story in print. I think it's time Diamond City had a little outside perspective on the Commonwealth. You do that, and uh, I'll tell you what. I'll come with you. Watch your back while you get used to the world above ground. All right, Piper. I'm in. Good. Let's get down to business. So, I know you're from a vault. How would you describe your time on the inside? My family and I were frozen. I didn't spend much time in the vault. W wait. <laughs> they boxed you up in a fridge? The whole time? Are you saying you were alive before the war? Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm over 200 years old. Oh my god. The man out of time. So, you've seen the Commonwealth, Diamond City. How does it compare to your old life? How <laughs> you think you can be like a smart douchebag if you want to? Honestly, seeing everyone surviving out here, rebuilding the world, it gives me hope. That's surprisingly inspired, Blue. We're definitely quoting that. Now, I already know you're looking for your son, Sean. Do you suspect the Institute was involved in his kidnapping? The Institute? Who were they? That, Blue, is the biggest mystery in the Commonwealth. No one really knows who or where they are, but their handiwork is all over. Synths. Synthetic people. Sent from their hidden labs to do the Institute's dirty work. Sometimes they even replace a person with a synth double. A little covert agent no one would ever suspect. Now, not everything that goes wrong has the Institute behind it, but there's always a chance. That's why I'm asking. They make synthetic people? That's right. There are two major kinds you have to watch out for. The first is an obvious fake. 
Skin looks like plastic, skeleton might even be showing. You see groups of them scouring the Commonwealth, killing people and scavenging what's left. I reported on University Point a while back. <laughs> Whole town got cleaned out. The second type of synth is the real deal. With skin, blood, warm smiles and guilty glances, just like a good old fashioned human. So do you think they could be involved? The Institute or one of their agents? Sure sounds like they might be. Not even a baby is safe from them. <laughs> and people wonder why I can't just look the other way. For the last part of our interview, I'd like to do something different. I want you to make a statement to Diamond City directly. The threat of kidnapping is all but ignored in the Commonwealth. Everyone wants to pretend it just doesn't happen. What would you say to someone out there who's lost a loved one but might be too scared or too numb to the world to look for them? No matter how much you want to give up, don't. You have to have hope that you'll see them again. Or at least, that you'll know the truth. A strong note to end on, Blue. Thanks. That's everything. It's gonna take some time to put this all together, but I think your story is gonna give Diamond City plenty to talk about. Anyway, I agreed to come with you, right? Watch your back? Just say the word when you're ready. I can't wait to see where the story goes next. If there's anything I can do to lighten the load, or, you know, if you need anything proofread. Piper. Heading my way? Sure, let's go. Will do. Piper, you listen to him now. He'll keep you out of trouble. Out of trouble? <laughs> Where's the fun in that? Uh, should have took that long to decide where I want to send him. We'll just send him back to Sanctuary. Took forever. I'm like, hmm, where do I want to send him? Where, where, where? What you got for me? It's big, loud, full of corrupt officials and brown nosing citizens, but it's home. You won't believe what's in the next issue, just as you wait. If anyone is Hello, one of those things, it's that secretary of his, her and her perfect hair. Mm-hmm. The mayor's secretary. Come on, <coughs> Ma. I'll well, hello cut her there. hair myself. And Another I know one of the poor hair. and stupid of Diamond City come begging for table scraps? Well, I do need some help. I knew it. Let's see. I have a few caps to spare. Here. Take it and make yourself scarce. Who are you anyway? Anne Codman. Of the Codman family? Of the upper stands? If you haven't heard of us, that just shows how unimportant you are. Now, were you leaving or not? Fine, I'll leave. Good to see you know your place. Huh. Around here, we call no, my your place. haircut Get the... the Scav Special. Little flex of blood, give it the personal touch. You should think about getting a trim. Sure. Just sit down, relax, and let the magic happen.
or something. Real quick. Excuse me, you got a moment? Tell me, are you worried about the possible infiltration of Diamond City's ruling elite by synths? Yeah, Piper, I am. But I ain't buying your lousy newspaper. Oh, uh, well, thanks. Snip, snip, and bam. Do yourself a favor and just say yes. It's yes. all here. <laughs> then do me a favor. Understands. Just say yes. It's all that understands. everything to everyone except since no sense allowed here you I, I don't know you just keep your distance why because I don't know you and I will not serve a synth pretending to be human so are you human human as the day I was born well you do look human enough and I'll be watching you I have eyes like a well they're good eyes got it all right we can do business, but no funny stuff. Sure. Let's take a look. Odds and ends. What you got? New guy, am I right? Yeah, I'm the new guy. Well, it's good to have you here. Name's Arturo Rodriguez. If you need protection, let's talk. Let's see what you have. Feel free to test the grips. Big boy. No, no. Hey, Arturo. If you're thinking safety, a long-range rifle lets you stay in cover and out of sight. But you might want a secondary weapon for flexibility. I've got a few minutes to break. Every
I ain't telling you how to pick your friends. Piper's kind of a troublemaker. Sometimes you gotta wonder, does anyone fight back? Smarter, smarter, who needs a smarter? What? You mean the railroad? That's a fairy tale, man. They don't even exist. Nah, I heard from my cousin. He knows a guy that works for him. They got a code phrase and everything. Follow the Freedom Trail. What the hell is that supposed to be? You're full of it. That kind of talk is gonna get you snatched up by the synths. Don't walk outside the wall undefended. High quality protection for sale. I told you your luck wouldn't last forever. Something wrong? Another stray coming in from the rain. Afraid you're too late. Office is closed. I know you must be busy, but I won't take much of your time, miss. It's important. You don't get it. The detective, he's gone. Missing. Nikki's missing? <laughs> what has he gotten himself into this time? Don't worry, I can help. Tell me what happened. <sighs> Nick was working a case. Skinny Malone's gang had kidnapped a young woman, and he tracked them down to their hideout in Park Street Station. There's an old vault down there that they use as a base. I told Nick he was walking into a trap, but... He just smiled and walked out the door like he always does. Hey, I'd love to help, but there's a small matter of expenses. <laughs> Don't play games with me. I'll pay you if you find Nick, but it's going to be a hundred caps. That's the reward, and it's not up for negotiation. I'll find him. You have my word. Thank you. Nick should be easy to spot. He's always wearing that old hat and trench coat getup. Please, hurry. I'm going to stop here for today, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. My name is Raven from the Sky. If you enjoyed the episode, drop a like and subscribe to the channel series grow. Take care and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.